shift. We got to talk about NBA TV DLT. So um, I have not fleshed this out through official channels. So maybe I don't have my facts 100% straight, but I want to tell you what I, the rumors I've been hearing that have been like coming out of Summer League right now, because this is where we can do that without fleshing it out. Um, Mm -hmm. So I've heard that the NBA is bracing for the idea that um, WBD, which owns TNT, is going to try to match Amazon's package. The NBA is going to say you can't do that because um, Amazon has twice as much global reach. Uh, John Oren at Puck has been writing about um, these matching things and how um, – the NBA doesn't think that TNT can match NBC because they don't have a broadcast network. And the NBA doesn't think that they can match Amazon because Amazon has bigger global reach. Um, And so TNT is going to say, yes, we can. And the NBA thinks that they're that when the NBA says no, TNT is going to sue. And so here's where it gets interesting because like, let's say WBD sues and NBA is right in their interpretation of the contract. So like, then it just goes where they want the rights to go. You'd be like, Mm -hmm. okay, great. What's the problem here? Well, the problem here is that NBC and Amazon need to staff up their announcers, their everything, their, their, their studio shows, the people who like produce all this stuff in the truck, the camera people that takes over a year to do all that. You can't just snap your fingers and air an NBA game. There's a lot of moving parts behind the scenes, talent negotiations, all types of stuff that they got to do to pick up the NBA from scratch. And yeah, maybe Amazon can outsource that or whatever, but if TNT can gum this up, for even a few months, it really throws the train off the tracks because they need to be prepared next October to be airing this stuff. And so um, there there could be like a scenario where, um, you know, NBA has to go back to NBC, Amazon, and maybe to a lesser extent, ESPN and Disney and be like, hey, can we just give a little bit of your inventory to TNT keep them in as a fourth partner, keep inside the NBA together. I don't know. Maybe we throw Amazon throws the company a bone and outsources production to them. And so they stay in the mix and we just avoid this like prolonged litigation. That's going to mess everything up. Yeah. But then Amazon might not want that and they might want more. Yeah, Well, you know, who really doesn't want it is NBC doesn't want that. NBC, part of their calculation in this bidding is that they own Comcast, which pays the sub fee to TNT of like $2 a month or whatever. And cost savings from this sub fee is built into their pitch to pay the NBA. And so there's like all sorts of plus like, um, Mark Lazarus, who is in charge at NBC, I think on the margins, like he he got fired by Turner and there is a human element of like wanting to, you know, be like, yeah, you shouldn't have fired me now, look. And so yeah. I'm not saying I'm reporting that. I'm just saying like logically, if you look at human nature, it wouldn't be like, I think that they have this justified by the dollars and cents, but it's just another element to think about in terms of whether NBC would want Turner as a fourth partner. Yeah, it's tricky. And it seemed like this was all done and it was a poison pill contract for Turner slash WBD. So they just had to go away. But now WBD has the potential to poison pill back. And that is their leverage in all of this. I was surprised by some of the the vibes, as it were. Um, I was expecting when I got the summer league that everybody would have their chest puffed out and they'd be just arms open, welcoming the money flood that was about to come to them. But we should maybe touch on this James Dolan, Nick's owner letter that he sent out um, warning the other owners of the path they were down because I heard a lot of that. I heard a lot of 
And hey, this is just what I'm hearing from people who are in ownership situations, right? You can say, boo-hoo, I don't believe it. I'm sure they're making money. Um, I don't care. I get that. But this is just what I'm hearing. It's just what I'm being told. It was a lot of, you know what? We're not making money. We're not making money. And even when the new TV deal is signed, we don't anticipate that we'll be making money because expenses are rising so fast and the players are getting half of the new TV deal. So just phase that out right there. And then if you're a big market team, you're doing this revenue sharing that has Dolan all bothered. And so it was interesting to me. I just expected, I assumed that all the financial issues would be dealt with, but you've got this strange WBD situation. And then even if that goes copacetically, you've got the Knicks owner, much as people hate him, he is speaking for a lot of those owners uh, who is saying that, look, times are precarious and troublesome right now. I found that very surprising. Yeah, I can see why if you're a big market owner like James Dolan, you don't want to be um, revenue sharing. First, like there's just, you know, who wants to revenue share? I don't want to revenue share. You don't want to revenue share. But um, at the same time, you know, his costs of running a team in New York City are higher than the costs of running a team in like Memphis. Like just in terms of what you have to pay people to work in the arena, what you have to pay the unions, um, all types of different things that we have no idea about. And so you're subsidizing these organizations that, yeah, they have lower revenue, but they also have lower costs. And you're making it it's weird like the nba isn't the nfl where it can thrive with kansas city and green bays of the world um yeah. in the spotlight like the nba just frankly does better when the bulls or the lakers or the knicks are heavily in the mix it's just it's a fact um yeah. and yeah, so I'm just sorry i want to interrupt i'm just reading this quote right here from dolan once again, pride of ownership is what is sacrificed. We are well on our way to becoming a one-size-fits-all, characterless organization. Just remember, we did this on the backs of owners like Jerry Buss. Uh, continue. I just wanted to get that one in there. That was interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, nobody is like playing a little violin for Jerry Buss, who had a great life and left a fortune for his kids and they're yeah. now up to divide but well, his kids um, can't afford a coach and have to penny pinch apparently i might play a violin for them they, they don't seem like they got any money which i've joked around about in the podcast and asked why but from what i'm told it's that if you're a certain type of organization you start making more money and it's 70 on the dollar to everybody else and um it's funny though and you Dolan gotta pay the players job. half the month half your revenue yeah goes to the players there's no way yeah. around there's, that you can't be like the pittsburgh pirates in the nba and not spend the oakland yeah. ace use a uh, analogy you, you're a little bit more well, familiar th with th this is why i don't own an nba team it's all these problems that accrue but <laughs> i i find it interesting i think dolan did a bad job by invoking the nfl and saying we're becoming like the nfl which you know, people go, oh, the horror, the most successful <laughs> league in America. Maybe in baseball the is the better example. Yeah, in the world. Maybe baseball is the better example where some of this revenue sharing, it also totally, it doesn't totally work out. When you talk to these people in these situations, it, you're you're a small market per se, but maybe you're a really rich owner and maybe you have a bunch of teams and I don't want to get sued, but something that infuriates certain NBA owners is the idea that other owners are hiding their profits in their other teams in this form of laundering that they can successfully pull off because the NBA is not the IRS and doesn't have those sorts of powers to necessarily well, track like, everything to, to you're be doing. Specific, like, um, so I don't know who your um, who that your people are complaining about, but let's say Stan Kroenke 
owns teams. He owns the Nuggets and the Rams. Hypothetically, and, Ryan. Hypothetically. Um, he owns them in other sports. So when you own multiple teams, you've got some like economies of scale where yeah. like for ad sales, you're like, okay, Pepsi, you're going to put this into the Nuggets and this into the Rams. But like if you're making a one size fits all deal, you can park more of that like revenue in the Rams and say, well, the Nuggets are only making Y. Uh, that's like the type of thing that people would be complaining about hypothetically. Yes. And man, that, that lacrosse team that Kroenke owns is just doing gangbusters, apparently. Man, <laughs> it's really raking in the profits. There's just some good lacrosse over there. Uh, look, I we, we say this not to lament or play a violin for these owners uh but just to observe that the dynamic of your profit being the valuation and the sale of the team versus what you're doing with the team that definitely informs how the league operates and you're seeing owners get out of dodge we've talked about cuban selling the mavericks based on what i'm hearing he's pretty much out regardless of what is presented he owns a chunk of the team but he's not involved anymore and that was his baby and you see the Celtics win the championship and the owner goes, yep, see ya, selling the team. And it just perhaps He's selling it in that, that weird Glenn Taylor format, it seems like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. We'll, they, we'll see. They, we'll, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll see how it all goes. It might linger like WBD and the NBA's arrangement. Um, yeah, I, it's it, it just shows that as a business, it's not easy to run an NBA team as a business that you just make profit from. And it's tricky because on the one hand, it is based on the big market teams, which I think are just inherently profitable. But I don't think these smaller market teams outside of what you're given to them necessarily are because of the rise in cost and the collapses. We're not even talking about the collapse of the local TV deals. So yeah, it's uh, there, there's a little bit more discontent within the NBA. It is the best of times and the worst of times, Ryan. 